hello guys today's video will be based on yield line analysis for slabs and for this particular problem we'll use a yield line analysis to determine the design moment for rectangular slab shown so stay tuned suppose you have a rectangular slab subjected to a uniformly distributed load w it is simply supported on two parallel sides and the remaining sides are free. It has a length of L and a width of alpha L. So our intention is to determine the failure moment or the design moment. So the first step will be to determine the yield line pattern. So this zigzag line represents the yield line. So if you take a section the two supporters are simply support, hence plastic end will be formed only in the middle, since roller and the pin does not resist moment. So this will be before failure, and after failure, the slab shows some rotation leading to total failure of the slab. We use virtual work method to determine the failure moment. So according to virtual work method, work done by the external load in undergoing a small virtual displacement is equal to the internal work done in rotation along the yield line. So this triangle represents the deflection shape upon failure. It divides the slab into two equal segments L over 2, L over 2 say this angle is phi and this angle will be phi over 2 so according to energy principle energy is conserved and hence internal energy must be equal to external energy internal energy is given by the product of moment multiplied by rotation multiplied by the length of projected yield line and external energy is given by the product of area multiplied by the load multiplied by the average move distance for each half slab so our first task will be to determine the rotation this rotation angle phi so we'll take this right angle triangle so it has a rotation angle phi over 2, a length of L over 2, and total deflection delta. So, using trigonometry, tan phi over 2 will be equal to delta over L over 2. But notice this rotation is very small. So, for small angle, tan of that angle is equal to the angle itself. So, for small angle, tan phi over 2 will be equal to phi over 2. So reducing the terms, phi will be 4 delta over L. The next task will be to determine the length of the projected yield line. So this is the yield line. And the projected of this yield line onto the axis of rotation, this is the axis of rotation, alpha L. So the length will be alpha L since it says the length of the projected yield line or in other term the, the projection of this yield line onto this line which is alpha L so internal energy will be moment multiplied by 4 delta L 4 delta over L multiplied by alpha L so internal energy will be 4 M alpha delta proceeding will determine the external energy so we'll first calculate the area of half of the slab the average move distance or the deflection contributed by half of the slab and we will multiply that by two so the area is alpha L multiplied by L over 2. So you have alpha L multiplied by this length L over 2. You have the area 
the load is W. In case of a rectangular slab, each half slab contributes a deflection of delta over 2. If total deflection is delta, each slab portion will contribute delta over 2. And we will multiply by 2 to determine the total external energy. So internal energy is equal to internal external energy. Reducing the terms, we will solve for the moment. So the moment will be WL squared over 8. Or in other terms, this M is equal to WL squared over 8 is the failure moment. When the slab reaches a moment capacity of WL squared over 8, it will fail. So that's it guys, if you find this video helpful, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel, I will see you in the next video, so thanks.